Hello, it's Bruce T here, and of the podcast. This podcast is based on Matthew 23, 1 to 12, and also in Thessalonians. And it compares the type of leadership that there are in the Jewish religion at the time and the type that Jesus and Paul wanted. So we're going to read now Matthew 23, 1 to 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad, their fringes long, and they love the place of honour at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the marketplaces, and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers, and call no man on earth your father, for you have one father who is in heaven, neither be called instructors. For you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So then to set the scene, Jesus rebukes the Pharisees for not performing their ministry properly. The proper way to do the ministry is all being written in the first five books of the Old Testament, and they should know how to do it. This is where I believe Jesus comes from. The fact is, they know what they should be doing, but they don't do it. Whereas Paul has a different style of ministry. From our reading Matthew, the Pharisees, they preach, but do not practice. They tie heavy burdens on people and stop them from living a free life under the law that they have. But they won't help them either. They're like showmen, just like Barnum in The Greatest Show, full of glitz and glamour bright colours and centre stage, with what they wear, places of honour, best seats in the synagogues, and they love to be called rabbi. But Jesus says the disciples are not to be called rabbi, father or instructor. Jesus came to serve, and so must we. And he ended the reading by saying, whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So in contrast to these Pharisees, we look at Paul in 1 Thessalonians. So we read 1 Thessalonians 2, 9 to 13. For you remember, brothers, our labour and toil. We work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you, while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also. How holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct towards you believers. For you know how Like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. Thank you, God, for your word. So in the time of Paul, there were two types of missionaries. Paul was seen as a missionary because he traveled around to the different areas, the different towns and cities in the time. Type one, they traveled around an area and would expect congregations they preached in to award them payment. Because of this, they like to put on a show using all the skills that were possible, all the rhetorical skills that they'd learnt and been taught at the places where this was delivered in Jerusalem and Greece. And it was their idea that the better the show, the more the reward. Type two, the missionary in this type paid their own way working among the people. Paul was trained as a Pharisee, but in order to convert people and to tell them about the gospel, He adopted the second type. Paul was trained as a Pharisee, but in order to convert people, he adopted the second type. Obviously, he would have known how Pharisees were conducting their ministry, because at one point he was one. But he had this idea that he wanted to work among the people. And as he'd been trained as a young man to repair tents and make tents and this type of thing, he had a skill 
that was really able to move around with him and there was plenty of work for him to do. While he worked, I could imagine that he was also telling people the stories about the gospel, the stories about Jesus, and they were really receptive of this and a church was built in Thessalonica. So we found that this type of ministry also worked in northern England. This was just like Aidan of Lindisfarne. The previous missionary wanted to lord it over people in northern England and failed to win any converts. But Aidan went among the people. He wouldn't even ride a horse given to him by the king. In fact, he gave the horse away. Consequently, because of the, his way with people, the church grew. He used to walk along, and if he met people, he would be able to talk to them about the gospel, about Jesus, and this way people were responded and they built churches in northern England. Paul always wept and paid his own way. Because of this, there was no burden on the listeners. Paul had blameless conduct like a father to his children. He exhorted and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, or as he was showing you how to work by his example. In 1 Corinthians 9.27, Paul wrote, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. And he says, but you Thessalonians, you received the word, took it to heart and accepted its authority as the word of God. This was their reputation among the people. They were able to pray and put into practice what they'd seen Paul doing. And they saw God act as well probably through prayer for healing, prayer for miracles, and prayer for changed lives. All this was happening, and it was because they imitated Paul and found that it was true. Because if you imitate somebody and do what they're doing, and it works for you, it's so truthful to you, and you want to do it again, because it's there, it's the gospel in action. I remember my bishop coming to the Bible college I attended. He got on the platform and started preaching. No introduction, he just got on with it. Then the Holy Spirit confirmed his message and people's needs were met. We were saying, who is it? No fanfare, no introduction, no crapping. He just got up and started preaching. And if you look in 1 Samuel 10, 22, you find out when Saul was going to be anointed as king, they couldn't find him. So they inquired again of the Lord, is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, behold, he has hidden himself among the baggage. When you think about it, the start of Saul's ministry, that is King Saul, he was a very humble man and he did what Samuel the prophet was telling him to do. But as he got more comfortable with it, he started to change. And in the end, God took the anointing of the kingship off him and gave it to David. But Saul wasn't satisfied with that and hunted David down to try and kill him so he could carry on or even pass it on to his son Jonathan. So he started really humble but ended up not being humble at all. So we need to practice what we preach. If we say something to somebody, it reinforces our message if we practice it as well. We don't practice it. It makes people think that what we're saying is not right. We also need to point people to Jesus because we don't want them following us as their saviour. We want to point them to Jesus because he is God. It's him who's paid the price of our sin on the cross of Calvary and he who rose again and sends the Holy Spirit to help us to live Christian life. So it says Jesus came to serve. So as we see, especially within washing the feet of the disciples, Jesus came to serve. Even though the Pharisees were false shepherds, the teaching was spot on. So Jesus was saying, follow the teaching, but not the action of the Pharisees because they didn't practice what they preached. And the problem is that human nature will always rather lean on a visible minister rather than an invisible Christ. Ryle says, in history, too many Christians have followed the steps of the Pharisees and tried to lord it over people. What was that verse again in Matthew? Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Again, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So what do we do? We need to know the where and we need to be wise. In James 1.5, it says, if you have not got wisdom, 
Ask God for it and you will receive it. It's a promise of God in James 1, 5. And we need to heed the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can urge us to do things, can urge us not to do things and make us feel uncomfortable if the teaching isn't right or what we're hearing. The Ryle said, call no man father, teacher or instructor. These are reserved for the Trinity. It's funny, you know, but when I'm going round, people often call me father due to how I'm dressed. And really, I say to them, no, I'm not a father. I'm a father of four children, but I'm not father in the church. I'm a chaplain or more of a pastor. If you remember some time ago, the time of live aid, I believe the Eurythmics were producing records. And one of them was thorn in my side. And Paul had a thorn in his side. Many people have speculated what it is, what it was, but we don't really know. But whatever it was, it kept him humble. It stopped him from thinking, oh, I'm great Paul. I'm the one who's praying for these people. Miracles are happening and things like that. People are getting healed. People are getting to know Jesus. No, Paul had a thorn in his side and it kept him humble. So we need to practice what we preach. And if you're a preacher, one of the things they say is this. There's one finger pointing forward at the congregation, but there's three fingers pointing back at me. So I've got to take it to heart. Just like Paul said, we need to beat our brow to make sure that we do what we preach. So let's just remember last verse from Matthew. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So until next time, bye for now.